G'day, I'm Alistair Christie and in this video we're going to look at how to use jQuery Mobile with IntraWeb. I've gone over time so this is all the introduction you're going to get. So here we have the FishFax application that we made in the last video and um, it runs perfectly fine in a desktop browser. Uh, we're not going to be winning any design awards um, but uh, it's, it's perfectly functional and usable. However, if we uh, bring up an Android simulator, and this is uh, running at uh, 320 by 480 HVGA, uh, and um, see if we can get the. There we go. Now, um, my machine is a 3 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, and between recording the um, Camtasia and running the Android simulator, it's a little bit painful to use, but. Um, um, still usable. So we can log in and um, it, it's well, it's usable, uh, but the experience is a little bit painful, and um, we could probably do a little bit better. But all the functionality works. So let's uh, start adding um, some jQuery mobile features and um, see if we can improve this a little bit. So we're going to start with our login form and we want to uh, control the, the HTML um, rendering a bit. So we need to add a HTML um, or template processor HTML and hook that up to the form through the Layout Manager property. And we want to create a new HTML page. Head out to jQuery Mobile and grab the single page template. I'm just going to copy the source for that. And um, And here we go. Get rid of that and paste that in. Oops. Now to make this work, uh, we need to save it, and it needs to go in the in a subdirectory off the directory with our executable, uh, which is in the debug Win32 directory, and we need to create a folder called templates. And we need to name our file the same as the form, the same name as the form, which in this case is IWF login. And if we run that, we get our uh, jQuery mobile template. So at this point, um, we want to get rid of, let's call this, and give it a footer of fish bags. And get rid of the default uh, data, or content rather. Now, we want to put our username and password and login button on the form. Now, Now to do that, uh, we use some special tags with these um, curly bracket percent and then the name of the control we want. Okay, save that and run our application
plugin and it doesn't actually do anything at this stage. So what I'm going to do um, actually to make that work I just need to turn off the uh, render styles option and it changes the uh, so we're now using um, full length username and password login and we're in okay but we can um, customize things further um, what I'm going to do is add a link pointed at nothing call it login and give it an ID of our login button and we run that oh except we want to save it um, let's refresh that page and we get a login button and because we've used the same ID it, um, the interweb is hooked up the um, um, JavaScript to the login button rather than, rather than our original login button. Now we're going to do something a little bit different. Also going to add an about button on this side. So what we are wanting to do is to be able to have a multi-page um, thing like this. So um, if we look at the source for this we see that we've got a uh, a page with an ID of foo and a page with an ID of two and so on. So what I'm going to do is um, let's go back to our template and ID login. I'm just going to copy and paste that. Get an idea of about. Make it the about page. And um, cleverly written content and we're going to add another button and point it at the about page and put another one here go back to um, login and save that and if we run it we've got a login and about and about fish facts now um, we actually probably want to go go back rather than um, this is kind of both sliding to the left. Oops. And it's got a login. I copied too much today. Yes, I did. So let's save that. So I'm just going to do a few more things to this page. Um, get rid of the back button from there and I'm just going to add another attribute to automatically add a back button to the page 
and this login button, we might want to make it a bit more obvious. So I'm going to change the theme on it. And if we run that, if we save it and then run it, um, Uh, our login button is now blue, and we've got a, a back button, and it, the, uh, it slides in the appropriate direction. Um, the one last thing I want to do this do to this page is um, there are some things we can do to tidy up um, the way the username and password looks, in particular if we uh, resize it down so it looks a bit more like a um, it's on a smartphone or something, but more appropriately sized. Um, there's some um, layout options we can use, so we'll, we'll do that now. So if we head back to the jQuery mobile page and look at the form elements and text inputs. So this is what a, a text input should look like, and that's the code for it. So it's going to copy that and go back to our application. And for now, I'll just paste one of them. Um, and it's for IWE username. And our Place that with our uh, username edit box. And username, and I'll just copy that. For IWB password. And put that in there. step and save and we now get username and password and you'll see it's added these bars between them uh, when it resizes. So that's pretty much our login page done. And next we want to move on to our fish list page. But before we get too carried away, we should have a look at our login page <coughs> in the um, Android emulator. Oh, and It more or less works. Well, it would work on a uh, slightly faster device, but um, and oh, we might as well remember remember that. Save us typing it in next time. And back to our fish list, which um, let's do something about now. So at our uh, template processor and hook it up to the page through the layout manager as before and create our new HTML page um, and I'll just copy that paste it in Okay, and now we have our, our blank page, and we want to add the DB grid. Um, 
So let's call it to something IWDB key fish. And save that as fishlist.html. And let's see if that works. Okay, so we've got our fish list, and you'll notice it's, it's done a um, bit of CSS to make things look a bit prettier or automatically. Um, but uh, we want lists more like this. In fact, um, something uh, a bit, bit fancier. Uh, I think that one is with what. So something a bit, bit like that with sort of a header and some some details. Um, so let's let's uh, do that now. So to do that, um, we'll generate some HTML. So I'm just going to change this to fish grid. And save that. And on our fish list in the template processor, uh, let's turn off the render styles. Um, and this on unknown tag. Equals fish grid. Then function that returns a string and let's return that for now and take a quick look at how that works or if it works okay so basically, we want to um, render a, a list, and that's uh, fairly straightforward. Call it um, UL unordered list. Just a string list. Let's create it. Result is going to be the text property. Yep. I don't have my uh, free and null FAN template on this machine. Um, okay. So we're going to start add by adding a, an ordered list tag. And closing it. Um, and I think the um, attribute one add is data role equals list view. Um, we'll see if that works. But first of all, First and while well, not in the file to begin and um, List item. Oh, goodness. Okay. 
Okay, and in that, for now, we will just add um, dot and on the data module, what, I'm, what I'll do fish data just add all the fields See how that looks. Okay, so that's a pretty good start. Except we want to make these links, uh, as in the previous uh, um, example. Okay, so we want to make um, some links. And close it. The question is um, links to what? So what I'll do is just disable the template processor for now and run this again. And have a look at the source. So if we scroll down we will see um, somewhere in there and on click so um, let's copy that and close that now Okay, and we need to add some double quotes. Okay, so there's our on click for our DB grid, and that there is our species number. I'm just going to put a percent uh, S in there, I could do percent D, I suppose, for a, um, an integer. Ah, uh, we'll do this. And in here we want our species number. In fact, does that compile first of all? First of all, yes. So, um, let's put a percent S in there and we'll do a Okay, so if I've uh, typed it in all correctly, 
um, when we run this and there's something I hadn't noticed before, I haven't updated the uh, username oh, except of course I have neglected to turn on our template processor again and while I'm here um, and also I am going to be lazy and say or not equal to zero I think Try running that again, and I'll save that. <laughs> okay, and here we go. So here's our um, fish list, and then our links. And if I click on one, we get our fish. So that's um, looking far better, but. Perhaps I want to put some extra information in here. Um, let's put the length in centimeters and the uh, species name underneath. So how how might we do that? Oh, um, we need to go back to our and let's let's save it all. So we'll start by. adding a oh. add the species name here Do the um gee, I'll just copy that for now. I got a div and we need to add a class equal something and I can't remember that offhand so let's go look it up um, list views um, we want the unordered list list item aside class If we run that, hopefully, if I uh, type that all incorrectly, we get that um, all laid out quite quite neatly with really little effort. Okay, so the next step is our fish details page. Save all that and go find it fish details. And you should be familiar with this by now, so our template processor, which we hook up to our form, create a new HTML page, which we want to control A, control C, and call it fish details
Okay, and now it's just a matter of putting the controls we want um, from the form. So we'll turn the uh, render styles off, and in our form, let's add a couple of links. text. So let's throw those on first. Um, oops. Fish details. Oh. Oops. That's what are they called? So I'll just be lazy how I bother renaming them. The image and category species name and length and text um, going in and I've added category, species name and length but these are um, just unrecognized tags as yet so if we go to the fish details and into our template processor and on unknown tag Java or something. Anyway, and why didn't that 
work. Ah, dot HTML. Yay. Okay. So, um, that's, uh, and does the back work? Yes. And does the edit work? Yes. Okay, so we've got one form left to do. And um, then we're done. And while I'm here, let's um, make the edit button a bit more obvious um, by going data theme equals B. And save that. Okay, so our fish editor. So let's do our usual thing. Our template processor, turn off the render styles, and grab the um, layout manager. New HTML page. And from fish list, which is the uh, most simple one. Let's save it. So there's not really much of anything new here, um, but I might, well, no, I won't bother. I was going to rename them to something nice. But um, as we are running out of time, so we're going to need three of these. Um, see if that works so far uh, before I get carried away I should save that so log in and edit ok so we need our, our um, memo and save buttons and we'll add our buttons in the header Cancel and IWB. 
Okay, and we need the memo. So I think um, head back to the jQuery mobile page and form elements and the ah. text area. that throw that on there we'll close that as well and it is our notes um, oh, actually I think this is just the same Twelve, but uh, I'll look at the form. Div content div. Oh. So I did have it there. It's just badly formatted. Let's run that and see if that's worked. And if so, we have pretty much finished. Ah, but we, I didn't save it, which seems to be uh, the main thing I forget to do. Uh, do an exclamation mark and save. Which uh, did work there. Oh, category triggerfish. I don't actually have the um, the common name there, but it's in our list. So that's pretty much it written. Um, how well does it work on Android? So let's reload the page. Okay, and log in. And we'll see how painful this is on my. Uh, okay, and it sort of works a little bit slow, but I guess I should probably upgrade to a uh, much faster, faster computer. And edit. And we might want our save button to be blue as well. So, and to do that, um, data equals B. And there are there are five five themes in total. Let's re-render that page, and it should be blue if it works. There we go. Okay, so we are done. Thanks for taking the time to watch my Code Rage presentation on IntraWeb and jQuery Mobile. I have run out of time, so I'll keep this short. You can learn more about jQuery Mobile at the jQuerymobile.com website. I've had a bit of trouble getting this process to work on Delphi XE2 on Android, but it works fine in a desktop browser. This is Alistair Christie signing off.